Trust in government is at an all-time low, from 70% of people after World War II to 20% in modern times. We all believe the game is rigged. In modern times, the middle class struggles to earn a living, our vote doesn't count, and we feel left out. How did this happen and what can be done about it? Welcome to PA Voter Information Network. This is Larry DiMarco, your host. Do you watch my YouTube channel but haven't subscribed yet? Why not now? It's easy and free. Just click the red button and the bell right beside it and you will be notified of all new content. This is part one of a five-part series loosely based on Robert Reich's Saving Capitalism, a documentary on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, two thumbs up from me. It's excellent. So what is the goal of the middle class? We want a better life than what our parents had. And the beauty of after post-World War II America, it was realistic and often achieved. But now the rules have changed and there's not a level playing field. How have the rule changed? And why are so many earning so much less? Well, let's look at the rules. The rules are policy decisions created by the government and they favor those in power. For instance, Wealthy corporations created bankruptcy rules so corporations can erase unlimited debt, but students can't declare bankruptcy from student loans, and homeowners can't declare bankruptcy if they're underwater because of their mortgages. These laws are government policies and regulations favoring the powerful corporations over individuals. Change in income in the United States tells the story of what happened to the middle class. Income growth was shared by everyone after World War II until about 1973. Then the top five income bracket continued to grow, but the median and bottom brackets didn't. So what triggered the diversion between the wealthy and the middle class? Well, in 1971, a corporate lobbyist, Lewis Powell, wrote to the Chamber of Commerce. He wrote that the entire free enterprise system is under attack by colleges, the media, and government, and they were all taken over. This Pow Manifesto, as it was called, was a call to action for big business. Quote from the manifesto itself, political power is necessary. It must be assiduously cultivated aggressively with determination and without embarrassment and without the reluctance that has been characteristic of American business. And again, this is back in 1971 here. It went further. Most importantly, in light of an activist Supreme Court, the judiciary is the most important vehicle for social, political, and economic change. In response to this document, came the policies of President Ronald Reagan, who spoke out against government and in favor of shrinking regulations in favor of big business. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Government, with its high taxes, excessive spending, and overregulation, had thrown a wrench in the works of our free markets. The government still made the laws, but the laws were in favor of the big business and big money and against the middle class. After, the CEOs of large businesses and business owners saw their income skyrocket while other income brackets didn't keep up. After the Reagan era and the policies implemented by his administration, the middle class started to shrink. Anger began in the 1990s with the middle class salary in decline. The rich got wealthier and the number of poor grew. The economy skyrocketed, but wages went down. This graph illustrates corporate profits going up and wages going way down. As money goes to the top, so does political power, because with increased wealth comes the ability to change the rules in the game. People who operate government do it for their own self-interest, and, and corporations operate government and make the rules to benefit themselves. The Powell Memorandum is evidence that separation of wealth between the working class and the corporate billionaire class didn't happen accidentally. It was a conscious power grab by corporate America starting in 1971, and then in 1973, even more. And then after the Reagan administration between 80 and 83, 
income separation between the rich and the poor became an even more dramatic. This has been part one of a five-part series. In the next episode, we will look at specific examples where big business enacted laws to increase its wealth and shrink the middle class. If you like the episode, please click the thumbs up button below the video, share the video with the people on your contact list and social media friends, and feel free to leave comments in the space below. That's the benefit of watching video on the internet. We can communicate. I would love your feedback. Signing off. Tune in next time. Bye for now.